Hey everyone, welcome back to another monthly meal prep. So of course, before I got started, I made myself a nice hot drink and I made a green tea this day before I started washing up some fruit. So I was going to use the strawberries for some blender smoothie packs that you guys will see here in a second. And then I just was washing up the blueberries for some fresh eating. I love having fresh fruit on hand and having it cleaned up always makes sure that we will eat it a lot faster. So the inspiration for this month's smoothie packs is kind of a strawberry pina colada type flavor. So first I cut up my pineapple and I don't know about you guys, but I feel like watching a pineapple get cut up this quickly is so satisfying. <laughs> and of course, to go along with the pina colada theme, I cut up some bananas and I always get questions when I freeze bananas on whether or not they turn brown, sometimes they do and sometimes they don't, but in a smoothie like this, you won't really be able to tell the difference anyways. And then I cut up all of the strawberries that I washed up. I kind of just kept everything right around the same size so that when I put it into the blender, it will all blend up pretty easily. The last thing I added to the packs was some large flaked coconut and um, that will just blend up really well in my blender. And of course, I'll just add some coconut milk or some almond milk to these when I put them in the blender and make them. I want to thank Ace Cool for sponsoring this week's video. They sent me this awesome stand up mixer with a 1400 watt high performance pure copper motor. It also has a seven and a half quart stainless steel bowl, which I have never used a mixer with this large of a bowl. It's perfect for large batches of cookies and things like that. It has a blue LED light as the power indicator and it has vibration absorption design and I really noticed this when I was using it, how it doesn't move around a lot. It stays firmly planted. It has a little suction legs on the bottom that really keep it where it's supposed to be. And that is a huge plus because if you've ever used a mixer that you're afraid it's going to fall off the counter, <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about. It has a super low operation noise, which again was something I noticed as well. It's not super noisy and it comes with all of these great attachments, including a dough hook, a mixing beater, and a whisk, and a splash guard for the whisk, which I thought was an excellent idea, especially if you're someone that likes to make eggs and meringue and all the things, which is what I do. I use mixers for all kinds of things. So having a splash guard really helps out with the mess. They include a three year guarantee. And I think this is something you could even gift to someone else. So definitely check out the links in the description box to find out more about this great mixer. It's super heavy duty and it's something that will last for a long time. So if you guys have been watching my last few videos, you know that I recently made some lemon biscotti and I have been on a little bit of a biscotti kick. So this week I decided to make some turtle inspiration. I think I'm saying that right. Some turtle inspiration biscotti. So of course you've got chocolate and a little bit of nuts and some caramel all mixed in. So if you've never made biscotti before, you should not be intimidated by it. It's actually super, super simple to make. So you just mix up the dough and then you put it onto a cookie sheet in a log shaped um, form and then you put it in the oven and you let it bake and once it's baked its first round of baking then you slice it into pieces 
and turn it on its side, which you guys will see me do here in a second, and then you bake it again. And one little trick I did learn with this recipe is that once you get through that second baking, you wanna turn the oven off and just simply let it sit. So I actually let these sit overnight in my oven and it really helped them to get a better crunch than my last batch. So little tip for you. And while it was baking, I did mix up the toppings or the things I needed for the toppings. So I put a little double boiler um, on my stove and then I put the chocolate chips in there to melt. I chopped up the pecans and got everything ready for whenever the biscotti came out and cooled a little bit and I would be good to go. And this is the fun part when you get to top everything and make it all look pretty and yummy and delicious. I did find this sugar-free sundae syrup at Walmart, which I thought was perfect for this. And then I put the nuts on top. And then I just popped this in my freezer, got them nice and frozen, and then transferred them to a bag to keep in my freezer. So the next thing I did is got out my pressure cooker, but I wasn't gonna use it for pressure cooking for this. I just was gonna use the crock pot or slow cook setting on it. And this is one of my favorite barbecue sauces. So I just put a pork roast in the bottom of here and dumped the barbecue sauce on top so that um, it could sit and we could have some pulled pork. That's a great thing to have in the freezer. It's easy to get out, thaw out, heat up, and eat right away. It's a really fast meal. Uh, the next thing that I did is washed up some of these baby bell peppers. They're one of my absolute favorite ingredients in the kitchen because number one, they're really fun looking even when you cut them up, but also they're just sweet and delicious. So I wanted to make some teriyaki chicken stir fry in some big bags. So all I had to do was pull them out of the freezer and throw them into my frying pan and fry the whole stir fry up. So I chopped up a lot of these little bell peppers and then I washed up some broccoli and I told you guys this a couple different times, but I try to avoid taking a knife to broccoli. I feel like it just creates such a big mess. So I take my fingers and I just pull the little florets off with my fingers and it saves me a lot of time and cleanup. And then of course I cut up the chicken and I did use chicken tenderloin for this. And I know there's a trick out there somewhere to pull the little, I don't know what it is, the, the little piece that goes down the center of the tenderloins. I just haven't figured it out yet. So every time I cut up tenderloins, everyone's like, look it up, look up how to pull that out of there. It's a lot, lot easier and it's just something I need to do. So after that, I put some teriyaki sauce and of course you can find a lot of different brands of teriyaki sauce. I did use a sugar-free version and then I just divided the chicken up between the two bags and I was so happy I got two nice sized meals out of this. I just have to say these look so pretty and they're gonna be a lot of fun to pull out of the freezer and cook up. And then I did insert this clip here cause I didn't wanna forget um, whenever the pork roast was done. I did put this in for six hours and then what I like to do is literally just blend it up with a hand blender. It just shreds it up really well and saves you a lot of time and energy. And then I put it into a freezer bag and stuck it right in the freezer. So we were in need again of some breakfast bowls and you guys know I make these a lot and I wanted to give you a little bit of a different version than the last two times I've made them. So I have been making making them with radishes. And I know if you're new around here, you're probably like, what? <laughs> so I like to find ingredients that people don't often use and kind of show you guys ways you can use them and just give healthier options. So instead of potatoes, I've been cooking up radishes in the same form as a potato and then putting them in the bottom of my breakfast bowls and they've been really good. But again, I kind of wanted to mix things up. 
So this time around, I decided to do bell peppers, onions, and then I decided to cut up a lot of button mushrooms um, just to kind of give me a base for my eggs and other things that you'll see here in a minute. So I cut up the bell peppers and I chopped them up pretty um, thick, I don't know what the right word is, kind of just big chunks. And I did the same thing with the onion as well. And then I also fried up a pound of sausage. And as you saw, I was putting the bacon into the air fryer. And you can put a whole pack of bacon into the air fryer, cook it all up. As long as you kind of get them going different directions, the pieces of bacon, um, they fry up really well and it saves so much time. Plus all the grease is all inside of the air fryer, which also saves on cleanup. So as I was frying up the veggies, I was frying them in avocado oil. It's my favorite oil to use. And then I was just putting some um, pink Himalayan salt on them as I was frying them up. And then I cracked, I think it was like maybe 20 eggs or 21 eggs, something like that. Um, I just kind of do some guesswork with all of this and then just put together whatever I have. So once the mushrooms were ready, I pulled them off and again, put some more avocado oil in and put my eggs in. Um, there is times I do recipes on my channel here with dairy in it, but I do try to give you guys a lot of dairy free options just because I'm personally dairy sensitive. So whenever um, I cook, I do use oils a lot, but of course you could use butter instead for all of these things that I was frying up. And then I will leave the link below for these containers. They're my absolute favorite. In fact, I've bought two sets of them because I really, really like them. Um, and they're from Amazon. I do use them in the freezer a lot. I use them in my air fryer. That's one reason I really like them because they're glass and I can heat things up in my air fryer since I don't have a microwave. I just don't even need, need one. Um, through the last probably two years or so, I really stopped using mine. And so when I moved into this house, I didn't really want a microwave to be taking up counter space. So um, I just take and heat these up right in the air fryer. They heat up perfectly. I take them from the freezer to the air fryer. So I just let them cook up in there. And the way I layered this up, I put mushrooms and then the pepper and onion mixture and then the eggs and then the sausage and then topped it off with some bacon bits. So now I have another baked recipe. I'm kind of on a roll. You all know I don't do a lot of baked stuff, but having this mixer is kind of inspiring me to bake a little bit more. So I wanted to do some cinnamon sugar mini muffins, and I love having mini muffins in the freezer. I feel like there's something that you can pull out quickly. They thaw really fast, and you can just leave them in there you know, for a month or two if you really aren't eating them. So I like to freeze baked goods for that reason. And the way that this recipe was put together was you were supposed to do the wet ingredients separately from the dry ingredients and then mix them together. 
Also, it does call for half and half, but I did use some coconut cream and I also used coconut oil in place of the butter. I wanted to add a little note about this mixer. All of its functions, the lever, the um, speed adjustment, the everything about it runs so smoothly. It's not difficult to pull the lever up or to you know, replace any of the attachments. It definitely runs really smooth. And to be honest, it's very good quality. So after I mixed up the batter, I put it into these silicone molds that are from Amazon. I love these things. I really like to use silicone in my kitchen just because it makes for such a easy cleanup and stuff doesn't stick to silicone pretty much at all. So while those were in the oven baking, I decided to put together a Asian marinade. So I started out with some liquid aminos and it is pretty much exactly like soy sauce. In my opinion, I think it tastes pretty much exactly the same, um, but there's a lot more health benefits to liquid aminos. So I did that, I did some avocado oil. Avocado oil has such a mild taste, so I feel like you can put it into anything. I did some sesame oil, and then I put some sweetener, which you could just use sugar, of course. Um, and I kind of mixed it around in the bag before I put the pork loins in it. So this is just some Worcestershire, Worcestershire? Okay. You guys know what I mean. And I feel like every time I use that, I get so many comments like, say it like this, or there's just the jokes about it. I even get Instagram messages about how I say that sometimes, and it just cracks me up because it is such a hard word to say. <laughs> Anyways, I mixed in um, some other spices, as you saw there. I didn't do a lot of measurements with this. I just kind of put it all together as I went, but I have to say, this marinade smells so good and I cannot wait to find out how this tastes. So you can just put the pork loins in it and put it right in your freezer and it's ready to dump into your slow cooker. And my suggestion on how to make these would be to put them in your slow cooker for maybe about seven hours, pull them out and then put them in your air fryer or you could even put them on broil in your oven just to give them a little bit more of a grilled or a textured outside. I feel like that helps a lot with pork, gives it a little bit of a better flavor and a much more desirable look and just they taste good that way. So just a little tip for you. So after I pulled the little mini muffins out of the oven, I did melt some coconut oil. Again, you can use butter, it's fine. Um, and then I dipped it into some cinnamon sugar and there you go. That is what they look like and I am excited to eat them. And one other thing I wanted to mention is Ace Cool has more than mixers. They actually have a lot of small home appliances and they also sent me their portable air purifier and it does have a true H13 HEPA activated carbon filter. It gives you a temperature and humidity indicator. It runs quietly and it's ultra silent. You can adjust the settings easily with a sensitive touch switch, which is always convenient. I enjoy those kinds of switches. It's a small size. As you can see here on my windowsill, you could really put this little guy anywhere and it does have a USB cable with it. Again, you guys can check out all of the things that Ace Cool has on their website with the links in the description box. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video today. I hope that it inspired you and it gave you some some more meal ideas. I know I've been loving the nice warm weather and all the fresh foods lately. I feel like that the produce in the stores has been looking so great. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to give this video a like and leave me a comment below. That helps me out a lot. And I will see you guys in my next video.